These are the skills that you should learn before getting into cybersecurity. So this is a commonly asked question I get a lot in my comments, especially from those of you who are just starting out and may not have any background in cybersecurity, but are looking to get into the field. This list is hopefully going to give you an idea of what skills and concepts that you should learn before deciding whether or not cybersecurity is a good career option for you. Number one on this list is learning how operating systems and computer systems work. So this is probably a very obvious one, but honestly not that obvious, especially when you think about cybersecurity, you're thinking about the phishing attacks, you're thinking about different types of malware, you're thinking about the hacking tools that you're going to be using, but you don't often go straight to the foundations and think about the actual computer architecture, network architecture, understanding what an operating system is, the different types of operating systems, the most popular distributions, the benefits of one operating system versus another operating system, as well as very foundational things like what a motherboard is, or CPU, or RAM, SSDs versus hard drives. So essentially all of these things, in my opinion, are very foundational to understanding just computer systems in general and i'm not saying that you have to be a complete master and whiz at, at networking or computer architecture but i do think that's one of the most foundational skills to know especially when you're in your early career because because you're typically going to be starting out as a generalist which is also what i did and while i had never been a huge fan of network architecture i still had taken one network or network security course when i was in college and by the way for those of you who don't know i was a ist major or an information science and technology major so you definitely don't need a cybersecurity degree to get into cybersecurity and you also don't have to go the bachelor's degree route either but yeah going back to my point about network architecture networking i will admit was never my favorite class but it did teach me a lot about how computer systems work how network traffic is generated and then passed along to the recipient of that network traffic the basics of http requests as well as kerberos and tcp ip those basic things that are honestly probably going to be a little bit boring to know in the beginning, especially if you're not using them directly in your day job. But I will tell you that little things like this do come up when you're kind of working through your day. For example, if you're working as a SOC analyst, there may be times when you have to look at some network packets or maybe analyze certain logs, and it'll really help you if you're able to know the basic foundation of communication between two machines or an end user's laptop to a server. And I know I'm combining kind of network architecture as well as computer systems systems in one little bucket which I know that they are very broad and can be studied as completely different things but in my opinion if you're going to be learning about the basics of what a computer actually is and how it functions then you might as well learn about how it functions within the whole ecosystem of computers which is typically going to be some kind of network of course not only computers but also routers load balancers switches firewalls you know all these things I think are going to be the foundation of your knowledge in cybersecurity even if you're not necessarily focusing on the IT security slash hardware side so for starters I would go on YouTube which you probably are already on right now watching this video but look up things like introduction to network security or introduction to computer architecture or introduction to operating systems and just go from there honestly there's a lot of free content out there that, that i believe is just as good as paid content so i'll definitely peruse a few videos maybe look at a few articles maybe try to pinpoint which areas that you're more interested in and they can also help you kind of scope out what area of cybersecurity that you want to go into especially when you're a beginner because all the doors are open for you all right next on this list is basic scripting skills so every time i bring up scripting or coding i will admit that i am a little bit biased because i come from a software engineering background. I do know that most cybersecurity roles in general do not code on a regular basis unless you're a security engineer or maybe you're on the red team and you're writing out some custom scripts for various things that you're working on. Maybe you're automating some kind of process. Maybe you're maybe you're writing a bash script. I personally do not code on a regular basis. I don't believe I have coded at all in my current role at least as a security analyst but i did in my previous company where i was a software engineer on a network security application and doing some python scripting for some automation work for our secure devops team so basically i didn't have to do any of the coding that i did but it was something that i chose to do because i wanted to keep my coding skills obviously currently i do not code on my nine to five job but there are a few personal projects that i do want to work on um, towards the end of this year when things get a little bit less busy at work so it really is always a work in progress i personally think that anyone going into tech whether you're software engineering or not coding skills are definitely going to be helpful for you even if you're just doing very basic things you can learn something very beginner friendly like python or you can go for javascript which is one of the most popular scripting languages especially for cybersecurity or even bash scripting if that is more your style any three of these will be very helpful for you in your career because Honestly, once you learn one coding language, it kind of makes it easier to pick up the rest of them and you can really meld them to each 
each use case that you have. I'm sure people are using Python for many things that Python was not originally intended to be used for, but obviously it still works. So I really think that coding skills are going to help you as a cybersecurity professional because let's say you bump into some kind of process and you realize how tedious it is, you can go ahead and create a Python script or some kind of automated script to be able to help you do that thing faster and move along with your life. Or even something like if you're working on a capture the flag or a hack the box challenge and you want to write a custom exploit or a custom script for this specific use case, then you can go ahead and do that. Or of course, there are many, many tutorials out there to kind of help guide you through that, especially as a beginner, which do not be shy about looking at different guides and walkthroughs because that is how I learn and that is also how my as a mentor taught me to learn um, especially when you're stuck on a problem for days weeks and you're just stuck you don't know what you don't know so you might as well look for those resources and be resourceful with the information that you need to get to the resolution that you want and scripting slash coding is just one of those tools in your cybersecurity toolkit that you can use for future jobs to help you in future interviews and it really is just overall a very versatile skill and can be used for many many different use cases across cybersecurity even if you're not coding every single day and of course it can definitely give you an upper hand during cybersecurity interviews or going into a cybersecurity job because you know how to code and you're able to also talk to developers about their concerns specifically around cybersecurity. And the next thing on this list is application security. So we've talked about the basics of computers, computer architecture, operating systems, and network security. And now for specifically application security, which is any web application. This could be for web applications. It could also be for mobile applications. These are probably going to be the main categories. I'm sure desktop applications are also going to be a category of its own, but I believe that is a very, very niche area, even more niche than mobile application pen testing. So you probably don't have to worry too much about desktop applications unless you're going into a field specifically for testing desktop applications like MMORPGs or something like that, which would honestly be a very cool job to have as someone who grew up playing many, many MMORPGs. But I digress. Basically for application security, this includes all things like knowing the most popular, most common vulnerabilities and attack vectors out there for web applications or mobile applications. This includes iOS apps as well as Android apps. And for example, for vulnerabilities, the OWASP Top 10 is a great place to start. Maybe keeping up with cybersecurity news about the different exploits and hacks out there or essentially creating your own RSS feed for different news articles and things that may happen in the cybersecurity field so that you're able to get those alerts and kind of keep up with the trends. I do have the RSS feed that I currently use and that is linked on my Patreon, but it's free for anyone to see. So I believe you can just scroll down. I probably posted it a few months ago, but you can download the OPML file and upload it to Feedly or Feedbro or whatever RSS aggregator that you use. And that'll gather all of the sources for cybersecurity news that you have in one place. So you can read them very easily without having to go to multiple different sources every single morning or every single day. And that's a great way to get started learning about application security, just seeing the kinds of exploits that are happening right now, seeing the attack vectors, seeing the types of attackers that are using certain exploits like ransomware, or maybe there's been a lot of escalation of privilege attacks out there, or maybe it's something huge like solar winds or the other dozens of big cybersecurity attacks that have happened throughout the last year or so. And of course, things like application architecture, for example, how a client endpoint connects and communicates with a server what happens when a user actually goes to a web application when they enter in that URL? What is all the behind the scenes that needs to happen to get all that data from the server or wherever it's coming from, a cache server or a database server? Maybe the application is using certain cookies. Maybe there's some kind of SSO or some kind of authentication or login that needs to happen in the application. How is all that happening behind the scenes? So basically just knowing how an application, a web application works. Of course, this will look a little bit different from web applications to mobile applications, but regardless, it is kind of the same idea. And I know I'm kind of throwing a lot at you guys right now because, because I'm just speaking so broadly about application security and then network security, but really cybersecurity is such a broad field that I think one of the quotes I've heard recently was that cybersecurity, or actually this was about certain certifications in cybersecurity, but, but regardless, I think this rings true that cybersecurity in general is a mile wide and an inch deep. So it's just 
a lot of broad information but but as a beginner in cybersecurity, especially entry level um, before you even get started i really think that i want to emphasize the inch deep part of the wide breadth of information because i'm not saying that you have to be a t-shaped developer and know a wide breadth of things and also know one thing really specifically it's going to take some time for you to figure out what is most interesting to you and be able to then go on and choose that hey this is the area i want to specialize in or maybe you want to go and be a generalist for your entire career which is probably what i want to do so you don't necessarily have to go super deep in any area in cybersecurity unless you want to specialize in that area but it is going to be helpful for you, especially early career, to know a broad breadth of knowledge and be able to know about a little bit about each thing so that you're able to talk about them during conversations, you're able to know what's going on if someone brings it up in a meeting in your future cybersecurity job, or of course in a cybersecurity interview, where they may ask you questions like, what do you know about XYZ? And then you're able to elaborate what you do know and what you don't know. So it really is just about breadth of knowledge and not depth of knowledge. So definitely keep that in mind. Even though I'm just kind of spilling all these things at you guys, I don't want you to be overwhelmed because you don't have to know everything as if you're an Einstein in any of these specific areas. Just enough to talk about in conversations and answer questions about them in interviews and, and be able to do your own research when you do need to know more information about a specific topic. And of course, this will really help if you're studying for a cybersecurity certification like the Security Plus, which is the certification that I took. And if you guys are interested, I do have a video on how I pass my Security Plus certification linked in the description below. And this next thing I want to cover is general cybersecurity hygiene. This is going to be the very basics of cybersecurity that you guys probably don't really think about on a regular basis from things like not to click on links in suspicious emails or things like using a good password manager or using a VPN when you're connected to a public network, even a private network. And I do have links for 1Password, which is an awesome password manager and one of the most popular, I believe, as well as ExpressVPN, which is the VPN that I currently use to keep me from the prying eyes of the public internet. And you can try those for free, linked in the description below as well. For example, I think one of the most important skills that I've gotten from cybersecurity is of course from the CIA triad or confidentiality, integrity, and availability. Availability is one that I keep in mind very much because for example, for this YouTube channel, I have all of my videos backed up probably at least three times and I do not take any chances on hardware failures. I know I've seen the hardships that go behind everything being stored on one disk and that disk failing on you and, and you having years of your data wiped clean and not having access to any of it again. So that is obviously very sad. And that is one of the main takeaways personally from cybersecurity hygiene for me. Of course, you can store data in the cloud, in iCloud or Google Drive or Dropbox or wherever you're storing your data. You can also store it in hardware with SSDs. I use multiple portable SSDs as well as micro SDs for all of my different content across, across my laptop to my camera to my phone. So I always have backups in case something goes horribly wrong, which which honestly, you never know when that would happen. You just always wanna be as careful as possible, especially when it's important information, important records that you're trying to keep. So I'm sure there's a lot more to be said about cybersecurity hygiene, but I will stop there because I kind of covered the biggest few that I really think about on a regular basis. But feel free to drop any in the comments below if you have any specific cybersecurity kind of like tips and tricks for staying secure while browsing the internet and just overall being a person that is connected to the World Wide Web. And the last thing I wanted to touch on is the different functions between the red team, the blue team, and the purple team. So these are again, very foundational concepts. A lot of what you do as a cybersecurity professional is going to fall under some of these umbrellas these three big broad areas, as well as in a separate bucket for IT audits and compliance things. But for the most part, you're either going to be on the offensive side, on the defensive side, or working together kind of in the middle. And I really do think that it's gonna be helpful for you to know what the blue team does versus the red team, as well as the different tools that they may use, how they work together on the purple team, or maybe, or maybe you're in a role specifically for the purple team, and your main job is to bring together the red team and the blue team, which I have seen lately in various different job postings. So just doing your due diligence and knowing these things will also help you be able to decide which areas that you want to go into in cybersecurity. Again, not everyone is going to be super specialized, but you're generally going to be somewhere on the spectrum between red team and blue team. And it also depends on what you find the most 
most interesting about working in cybersecurity. For example, do you like digging through logs and analyzing for different anomalies or digging into certain alerts or incident response and looking into certain user requests, which is typically on the blue team side. And then on the red team side, you may have pen testing, you may have ethical hacking, as well as different code scanning tools or source code analysis scanning or spending three months on a cybersecurity campaign to test one of your internal applications to see what exploits you can find and what vulnerabilities you want to take advantage of, which is typically going to be on the red team side. So you basically get the idea, red pill versus blue pill, somewhere in the middle or in the compliance and IT auditing space, which I think it's one of the most important jobs in cybersecurity. Even if it's not the most technical, it is one of the most important, especially for smaller and mid-sized companies that are looking to get certain certifications or meet certain compliance requirements that their customers and clients are going to ask for. All right, so that's it for this video. Let me know if you guys have any questions or anything that you want to add to this list in the comments below. If you like this video or found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up and turn on post notifications. I post videos every Wednesdays and Sundays at 12 p.m. Thank you guys again so much for watching and hopefully I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.